Hi all, welcome to episode two. Today we're going to introduce the concept of a sprite sheet, also known as a texture atlas, which is a way to combine multiple sprites into a single image. This provides benefits in organization and render batching, which we'll deal with later. We will also create an engine package, which will hold our generalized game engine type packages. All right, let's get started with some reorganization work. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder that's called engine. This is going to hold basically everything that's generalized inside of our game that could potentially be moved into an engine uh, by itself. But I'm going to leave it in the, in the same repository just because that's easy to manage. And then in here we're going to make an asset uh, folder. And this is going to represent our asset package. And the goal of this package is going to be to uh, manage all of our reading in of assets, decoding them, and then using them or so that they can be used into the game. So we'll make a file called load.go. Now because this package folder name is called asset, we also need to name the package asset. And then when we import that into our main pro main package, we can just do uh, import it as asset and then do asset dot, asset dot function name. Now because we called our folder asset, we also need to name the package with the same name. So we'll do that there. Now what we're going to define here is just a load object. And this object is going to basically uh, manage all of our loading in and out of the file system. So inside of this object, we'll have a file system. Uh, which is fs.fs, and then that can be used to actually open files and read them in. Now we can write a constructor function called new load, and that'll just return our load object with the file system attached. Now we can define an open function. This will read in a path string, uh, which will represent the file path and file name, uh, and then uh, what this will return is the opened file. Now we can redefine our get sprite function. We'll call it sprite here, just so that it's the notation, just so that the notation's a little bit simpler. So we'll do like load dot sprite, uh, and that's kind of obvious that we're trying to load a sprite in. So it'll return a uh, it'll return a sprite object and an error if there was an error. Back in our original get sprite function, we have some useful code that we might just copy over. Now that we've copied that code over, though, we do need to make a few changes. Notably, instead of using os dot open, we want to use file system dot open to open through our load object. Then back in our main uh, class, or our main package, let's just delete this get sprite function. We'll also go ahead and start using our load object. First we'll define our load object by doing asset.newload, and we'll pass in the uh, uh, directory file system, and we'll just specify the directory that's right next to our main file, or right next to our binary, I guess. So this will be our new function call to load in our man sprite. Back in our asset package, we also need to specify all of our imports. There's a lot that we just added, so hopefully we get them all. Back in our main class, we're actually not doing any more of this uh, image decoding anymore, so we can remove those inputs, imports. All right, let's cross our fingers and run our code. All right, so in our main, uh, this error was basically because in our main file, in our main uh, package, uh, we forgot to import our asset package that we just declared. All right, attempt number two. All right, and there we go, and our guy's still loading in, so that's perfect. Next, instead of individually loading each file, uh, each image as a separate file, we actually want to just combine all of our images into one sprite sheet, into one sprite sheet, and that's useful for two reasons. One, it's kind of organizationally useful to just have everything in one file, so we don't have to constantly be opening up files from the file system. Uh, and then two, it allows us to do uh, GPU batch calls, and that's where we take multiple. Uh, Multiple of, of the of sprites that are coming from the same image, and we're going to draw them to the screen to this yeah to the screen. Uh, so that's slightly more efficient than uh, drawing each one individually to the screen. And we'll have a later lesson about that about batch calls, but uh, for now, just trust me, and uh, we'll build a sprite sheet, and then later on we'll be using it more often. So sprite packing is actually a fairly complicated topic, uh, but I went ahead and wrote a, a quick command line tool that uh, does sprite packing for us. And it'll basically take a list of images and then uh, pack them into one file. And then also it'll create a JSON file, which specifies all the uh, locations of all the sprites that we packed. So the like output of the, sp of the file looks something like this, uh, where here's a bunch of randomly generated rectangles and it kind of sorts them uh, largest to smallest. Uh, and then packs them as best it can. It's not a super efficient algorithm, uh, but it's a good start, I think. Okay, so to install Packer, what you need to do is uh, this command, go get Packer, github jstuart7 uh, packer, dot dot dot, and the dot 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 uh, is to look up the binary which is located in the commands file, and then it'll install that to your go path. Uh, then you'll be able to use Packer, and to use it, you basically uh, do the commands like fo as follows. Uh, packer, dot dot input, and then sprites is the folder that holds all of your sprites to be packed. Uh, and then the output path you can specify, uh, and that'll go to the file name that you want to uh, pack into. 
And then um, one other detail about Packer, uh, the JSON file that it creates uh, will have the data formatted like this. Uh, and this is kind of the data that will get packed. So it'll have image name, which will point to the packed image uh, .png. Uh, that'll have a list of frames, which represent all of the um, uh, f uh, images that were packed into the sprite sheet. And there's a little bit of meta information, which isn't very useful. So now that we have the Packer tool installed, uh, let's make a folder for all of our images. And then we'll drag our man.png into that folder. And then back in our main.go file, uh, we can use the uh, go generate directive to uh, run Packer whenever we run go generate. And I'm also going to spec specify the uh, stats flag, just because it's kind of cool to see stats pop up. So this is all you need to add there. Now, right before running, we can run uh, go generate and then run go run. Oh, I forgot to. Uh, so now that this uh, back in our uh, asset loader, uh, we need to specify the uh, origin directory of this dir fs to be images. And that's where our man was moved to. Uh, but our packed image is now here. Uh, and it's just kind of a packed image of one. Uh, and then our packed.json file is right here. And it kind of, uh, it kind of contains all of the details uh, related to the sprite. Now let's go to our um, uh, asset uh, package. So in here, we're going to want to define our sprite sheet object. And then that's going to be something that, that'll be able to be passed around. And then from that sprite sheet object, we'll be able to just pull out images uh, or pull out sprites as we need them. So in the sprite sheet object, uh, we'll have two uh, pieces of data. We'll have the original picture that was used, and that's uh, useful for creating batch objects in, in uh, Pixel. So that's kind of a, um, like, like a useful thing to have. And the second thing we'll add is the uh, lookup map. And what this will be is it'll just be a map from uh, file name to uh, the actual sprite object that, that was created from that uh, file name. And this is the original file name. So for example, uh, if we wanted to look up our man.png, we literally pass in man.png here. This will be our constructor function, uh, new sprite sheet. And then I'll just take in the picture and the lookup like we had specified before and then return a pointer to the sprite sheet object. All right, so we can also define a get function for our sprite sheet. And what this will receive is the name of the file that was uh, packed, and then it'll return that sprite, and it'll also return an error if there was one. So this is our code that's going to be in here. It'll basically look it up from the map, and if it's not okay, uh, i.e. the map didn't have that entry, and then we'll just return an error, invalid sprite name, and then we'll return the sprite because we obviously found it if we got past the uh, not okay if statement. And this little helper function will just return the picture that was attached to that sprite sheet. All right, now back in our loader, uh, this will be our get sprite sheet function, which we'll just call sprite sheet. Uh, and in input to this, we'll pass in the JSON file that needs to be uh, read in. Uh, and then with that JSON, we'll detect where all of the sprites are. We'll also um, uh, detect where the image file is. And then we will combine both of those into the final sprite sheet object and return that. We'll also return an error if there was one. All right, before we load the JSON, we need a JSON loading function. So let's write one of those really quick, and then we can use it in this function. So this will be our JSON loading function, uh, and it'll basically take the path of the JSON file, and we'll also pass in uh, an interface, um, which will represent the pointer to the uh, object that we want to deserialize into. Uh, so in our example, we'll pass in a pointer to the serialized sprite object, because that's what's held in our JSON file. So first we'll open up our file and then we'll uh, put a defer file.close as well. Then we'll use IOUtil to read in the entire file and then we'll uh, return an early error if we happen to have one. I'm actually going to rename the byte value object to JSON data and this represents a, uh, an, a slice of bytes. And this is a uh, standard Go uh, JSON on Marshall function which takes in the bytes that we read in as well as uh, that pointer to that uh, uh, type that needed to be decoded. All right, so here's our uh, code that'll load in our JSON. Uh, and we'll basically define the uh, data type that was inside the JSON file. And that's basically what we're decoding the data into. Uh, and then we'll call our load.json function that we just finished writing. We'll pass in a pointer uh, to that serialized sprite sheet object that we want to decode the data into. And then obviously we'll check for errors and uh, return early if we have to. Now that we're going to load the image, uh, let's take some of our common code from that uh, load.sprite function, and we'll move into a load.image function as well, just so we can reuse code. So we'll basically cut all this code and put it into our image function that I just finished typing above, uh, and then we'll use it from here. Now that we have a load image function, uh, we can just use that directly.
All right, so here we can use our load image function just like we did before, and we'll return early if we have to. And then notably, uh, the serialized sprite sheet object uh, it was defined in the Packer class, uh, which was pulled in from that Packer package that we uh, had added before. Um, so uh, one of the pieces of data that they uh, put there is uh, the image name. And so that'll be used. Uh, so once we decode the JSON, we'll use the uh, image name from the JSON to find the actual image file. And we'll use that image name to decode or sorry, to load the, that image uh, into this uh, image um, value variable. Uh, next, we can convert that, uh, that image uh, variable into a picture variable. Now that we have the JSON and the image, uh, all we need to do is combine the two into the sprite sheet object. So what that entails is basically building this lookup map. And, and so to do that, we'll basically loop through that serialized sprite sheet object and um, uh, kind of create this lookup map. So in this for loop, we'll basically just loop over every single frame uh, inside of the serialized sprite sheet. And what a frame represents is basically uh, one image that was packed into the sprite sheet. Here we'll make the uh, lookup map, and we'll use that when we when we pass into the uh, new sprite sheet constructor that we had defined below here, because it receives a uh, lookup map as well. So first we're going to add a bounds object, and that'll represent the bounds of the uh, input picture. Uh, and then next we're going to define the rect object, and this is the kind of cutout rect from the sprite sheet, and that and uh, that rectangle kind of encloses the sprite that we wanted to pull out. So here's a diagram to illustrate what I was talking about. Uh, if you imagine this entire re a large rectangle, that's the sprite sheet PNG. Um, and then you have a bunch of smaller rectangles, which represent sprites being packed. And you have like one target sprite you're trying to pull out. Um, so, so the, uh, the image or the sprite sheet PNG, um, uh, has a coordinate axis that starts in the top left hand corner. The pixel coordinate ask access start axis starts in the bottom left hand corner. So it's going to do a little bit of conversion to get it. And then also, uh, pixel represents rectangles differently than us. So they represent a minimum and maximum point, whereas we represented it as a, a XY point with a width and a height. So uh, we can do the conversions as described here to get those points. Basically, min.x is uh, the same as the JSON frame.x, and uh, min.y is the height uh, of the of the sprite sheet.png minus the um, this total height, which is the uh, height of the rect of the JSON frame plus the Y point of the JSON frame, and then the uh, max dot X is the X plus the width because it's this length right here, and the max Y is the uh, height of the sprite sheet minus the uh, minus the Y point, which is this length was the Y point, so this would be the uh, target link that we're looking for. So finally in our for loop, we can actually just uh, pass this, um, or we've built this rectangle and we know the picture, so we can create a new sprite based off of that. And we'll create that new sprite and then we'll pass it into uh, the correct lookup, uh, the, the correct map entry of the lookup table uh, based off of the key that we had read in from this for loop. And then finally we can create our, our uh, new sprite sheet. Uh, and then we'll return nil as the error because there was no error. All right, that was a lot. And we added a lot of imports. So let's go ahead and add those really quickly. So we need the JSON package to do our decoding. And if you recall, we used that IOUtil package to read in our JSON file uh, before we did the encoding. And this is the uh, path to the Packer uh, data types that I had specified before. Let's hop back to our main uh, package. All right, first let's see what everything if everything just runs, uh, just to make sure it's running, and then we can go back and uh, change this to read, in, instead of reading a read sprite, we'll read in uh, from the packed sprite sheet. All right, looks like there's a lot of errors in the load function. So we forgot to return the image here. So let's return image in nil. And on line 41, we've got to uh, set it to a variable that we were using below. Oh, and then for errors, because we're using errors now, we actually have to import that. So I think we do it up here, like so. Let's try to build again. Line 42. Oh, this undoubtedly returned an error. So let's check that. Forgot to return uh, the two objects here. I think they did that somewhere else. Yes, yeah, so we just need to return nil for um, the, the sprite here because we were returning an error, and then we needed to return nil for the error here. All right, everything's running now. Okay, let's work on converting uh, the image readins to use our sprite sheet now. 
So this should uh, load in our sprite sheet. I think it also returns an error. So we'll do if error no, we'll panic. And we also need to uh, point our uh, asset folder back to our original folder rather than the images folder. So now the images folder is kind of just going to represent um, uh, all of our original images before they get packed. They'll get packed into our JSON PNG and our JSON and our or sorry our pack.json file and our pack.png files, and then uh, we'll read those in like so. Next, we can do sprite sheet .get. So we can run that, and then it's there. Uh, and then we can do go generate and go run dot. And there you go. Now he's back in action. All right, so now our sprite sheet's being loaded in properly. We're not panicking because there's no errors. And then also the man sprite's being loaded from our sprite sheet rather than from our original get sprite function. Cool, so that'll be the end of this tutorial. Uh, thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, yeah, we learned a lot of stuff today, right? About um, sprite packers, uh, reading in files, encoding, decoding JSON. Uh, so I hope you'll stick with this. Uh, and uh, there's a lot more to adventure through. So.